every EFB program must have policies and procedures for managing the program. These policies and procedures provide guidance for assigning personal electronic devices, or PEDs, to pilots and to individual aircraft, how to ensure that the most recent versions of the software are installed when directed, and that required databases are updated to maintain currency. Procedures must be established to determine how PEDs will be powered during flight, which features of the EFB application are authorized for use in normal operations, and how the devices are to be secured physically and electronically. In addition, policies must be set for individuals involved with the EFB program to receive training on use of PEDs and the EFB application, including initial, transition, and recurrent training. In this video, we explore an example set of policies and procedures for managing an EFB program. However, viewers should understand that the policies and procedures for the certified operator are those that should be followed in the EFB program for that operator. PEDs required for operation of the EFB application can be assigned to an individual aircraft, with one for the captain, one for the first officer, and one spare unit for backup use. All three of these units must have the same version of EFB software installed, and databases must be current on all of these devices. To ensure that databases are updated, the Auto Download Pilot Updates option must be selected to On in the Settings General page. While the PEDs are in the aircraft, they should be plugged in to the power supplies provided for this purpose. Standards for configuration of the EFB application must be set and followed for all devices. This provides for crews to fly other aircraft in the fleet and ensures that they see the same setup on each EFB device. This includes map chart settings, where a selection for the map to be viewed is made. Here we have selected the IFR map, with specific settings in the general, airport, nav aids, airspaces, and cities tabs. These settings should not be changed on the devices. The next area where selections can be made is in overlays. Pilots may select the overlays from this list that provide for optimal situational awareness for the flight. Radar and IR color must remain as selected to provide for a standardized display of these features. The Opacity selector provides for changing the level of opacity for displayed overlays. These should remain in the default position. The Own Ship Route selections and General selections should remain as set to provide for a standardized display. One other selection that is standardized in this EFB program is the Automatic Safe Taxi feature, which is selected from the Settings page on the General tab. This feature provides a detailed airport diagram during taxi prior to departure and again upon landing at the destination. The safe taxi diagram shows your aircraft's position on the airport surface. Flight routing is entered by the pilots directly within the flight plan function. Once a flight plan has been entered into Garmin Pilot, the user must select Create Trip and complete the remainder of the input in the trip planning section. Once the information is input, the user must view the nav log to determine whether the course seems reasonable, whether there will be adequate fuel remaining at the destination, and to determine the estimated time and route. Then the Brief tab is selected to obtain briefing information for the flight. The information in the briefing must be reviewed by the captain who is responsible for briefing the crew concerning plans for managing any special considerations and threats identified during review of the briefing material. The crew should have a common understanding of all factors affecting the flight. Once the briefing material has been reviewed, the charts icon, located on the tab bar at the bottom of the screen, can be selected to ensure that the chart package for the trip has been created. Here, we see both the origin and destination airports listed. If a departure or destination alternate airport is required, 
Adding an airport's chart package is accomplished by selecting the new binder icon, where you type in the airport's ICAO code and then select the add chart icon. Now, enter the ICAO code in the search field and select add all charts from the top of the window. Once all of the charts are loaded, you can select the back icon. As a final step in the process of validating the route, you should return to the navigation map and select the route icon to view the entered route. Policies and procedures for operation of the EFB program will change from time to time, and all users of EFBs are expected to be familiar with the program as written. Users will be notified of any policy and procedure updates when issued. Now that we've reviewed some elements of program policies and procedures, move on to the next video in the series covering operation of the PED.